Gather together from the cosmic reaches of the universe. Here in this great hall of justice are the most powerful forces of good ever assembled. I'm Batman. You built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? I'm Connor McLeod of the Clan McLeod. I was born in 1518 in the village of Glenfinnan on the shores of Loch Shiel. Now I am immortal. I'm Captain Kirk. I'm a doctor. But probably not the one you expect. Welcome to Special Geek This Week. This is my top 10 Hammer Horror Films. Hammer Studios, famous during the 50s and 60s for Gothic Horror. This was a British film company that put out some of the greatest Gothic films during the 50s and 60s. And this is a top 10 list of my favorite uh, Hammer Horror Films. Now this is my top 10 list. This uh, is not an official top 10 list uh, by Hammer uh, Studios. Hammer still makes movies today. They've made movies such as The Woman in Black, Let Me In, as for uh, such uh, as such films today. But it's during the 50s, 60s, and 70s that they are known for their gothic horror. And this is my top 10 list of the top 10 Hammer horror films. Number 10, The Gorgon. The Gorgon, Hammer's first album dealing with Greek mythology, starts the story in 1910 in the rural German village of Van Dorth where several murders have been committed over the several years where each victim has been petrified to stone. The Gorgon stars Christopher Lee, Peter Cushion, Barbara Shelley as the heroine slash victim. Wonderful movie, well done. This shows uh, for, uh, several times of Christopher Lee and Peter Cushion working together and their chemistry on screen shows here once again how well they work together. This film also has a supporting appearance by Patrick Trothrop, Trolton, who plays Spectre Kandoff. You may remember uh, Trolton from his role as the second Doctor from Doctor Who. I love this movie uh, because of its chemistry, its atmosphere, and the story is well done. Uh, you can find this movie on uh, DVD and on Blu-ray. Number 9. The Curse of the Werewolf The Curse of the Werewolf is a unique telling from Hammer Horror as it starts uh, from the birth, childbirth. Uh, the story is set in 18th century Spain, which tells of the birth of a boy named Leon, who was born to a mute maiden girl who had been raped by the uh, Majorik of a village. The child grows up and is played by Oliver Reed in one of his earlier roles. The makeup for the werewolf doesn't show up until the very end of the film, but it's a spectacular makeup um, just, uh, done by Roy Asher. Uh, the film uh, mainly stars uh, people that are not normally associated with Hammer films. 
but is still well done and uh, to my mind a, a good movie uh, unfortunately it didn't do good in the theaters but still to me it's a good it's a good film you can find it on the four DVD set the Hammer Horror series uh, you can uh, find that uh, it's part of the uh, Universal uh, MCA uh, franchise collection but it's still uh, it's one of my favorites and uh, it's on the list at number nine so check it out number eight Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde is a 1971 film It's the third adaptation of Robert Louis Stevenson's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde uh, this is a unique twist as it uh, shows Jekyll transforming into a female version of Hyde. The uh, plot also takes in aspects of Jack the Ripper and the Burke and Hare uh, cases that uh, are historical that took place in London in the 18th century. Uh, the film is directed by uh, Roy Ward Baker. Uh, the film stars Ralph Bates, who was uh, Hammer's attempt to uh, groom as a replacement for the uh, pure cushion. And it also stars Martina Be uh, Beswick, who you mo may recognize from the James Bond films From Russia with Love and Thunderball. In this film, Dr. Jekyll has de dedicated his life uh, to cure all known diseases. Uh, he hopes to discover uh, how to do that. Um, uh, he uh, abandons his study and he becomes obsessed with extended life. Um, he then starts using the female hormones uh, from cadavers and creates elixir. Um, uh, he feels that it will extend his life because women traditionally live longer than men and have stronger systems. Uh, spectacular movie uh, it works great because of the uh, uh, because of the, sp uh, the similar look that Bates and uh, Beswick had um, a very good movie uh, I like it uh, transform scenes were uh, unique um, originally Caroline uh, Monroe was offered the role but she turned it down because the role required nudity um, this movie, unfortunately, is out of print, so if you want to see this movie, you're going to have to look for it on eBay. Number 7. Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed is Peter Cushing's fifth album as Baron Victor Frankenstein. In this film, Frankenstein black bells a young doctor, uh, Carl and his fiance Anna, played by Veronica Karsten, uh, into helping him kidnap the insane Dr. Branton, a former colleague of Frankenstein. Branton had suffered a hollow, uh, has, has a brain clot that is uh, putting pressure on his brain, and Frankenstein plans to transfer his brain into a new body. Unfortunately, he suffers, uh, Brenton suffers a heart attack during the uh, escape and uh, Baron is uh, successfully able to transfer his uh, brain into another body. This film has a controversial scene where Frankenstein rapes Anna. This film, was, this scene was filmed over the um, objections of Pierre Cushing, Veronica Karsten, and the director of the film, Terence Fisher. This scene was put in at uh, the assistance of uh, the producers who wanted to please American distributors. The film ends with Branted confronting Frankenstein in his home and he sets the home on um, fire, giving Frankenstein a choice choose between the flames or the police, Frankenstein. Uh, this film to me uh, is unique because it just uh, shows Frankenstein as uh, a, a person who only cares about his end game, his goals, and no one else. And if anybody gets in his way, he shall take him out. 
Uh, it's a good, it, it's a good movie in my mind. A lot of people don't like this film. I do. Um, it's uh, probably uh, stays true to um, uh, Cushing's performance, cl or close to it, uh, as I can say uh, from uh, the his breakout performance, *The Curse of Frankenstein*. Uh, this movie is available on DVD and Blu-ray, and you should have no problem finding this film if you want to see it. Number six, *The Horror of Dracula*. The Horror of Dracula, otherwise known as Dracula in England, it was given the title Horror of Dracula uh, for its U.S. release, so it wouldn't be confused with the Bela Lugosi version of the film. Uh, the film uh, stays mostly true to the Bram Stoker novel. Uh, changes made to the film, Jonathan Harker it comes to Castle Dracula to kill Dracula, but becomes a victim of Dracula himself. Uh, another change in the film, Mina is no longer the fiance of Jonathan Harker. Uh, she, uh, she is married to a, a new character, Arthur Woodward, and it is uh, his sister Lucy that is Harker's fiance. Otherwise, the film uh, stays true uh, to uh, the novel. Uh, uh, Christopher Lee's performance as the Count uh, was uh, breathtaking. I think this is uh, one of. Uh, I think this is the performance that really cements him as Dracula. I think it's one of his well-done performances. Uh, this is also another collaboration uh, with Christopher Lee. Uh, this film was made after the successful *The Curse of Frankenstein*. In this, uh, Pierre Cushion plays the hero, Dr. Van Helsing, against uh, Lee's Dracula. Uh, and it also shows a spectacular special effects of Dracula decaying and crumbling to dust after he's exposed to sunlight at the end of the film. Uh, the film is available on DVD. Uh, and uh, if you want to catch it, I just think it's one of the uh, better films. Also, you may notice uh, Michael Gula, uh, who is in the film. He plays author, author Woodenham. Uh, you will know him better from the Batman movies, where he played Alfred uh, the, in the two uh, Tim Burton films and then the Joe Schumacher films. So uh, that's where you will know him from. Nevertheless, uh, it is a breakout performance for Christopher Lee as Dracula in the horror of Dracula, uh, number six on my list. Number five, The Vampire Lovers. The Vampire Lovers is a 1970 uh, film. It was directed by Roy Ward Baker. It stars Peter Cushing and uh, Kate, Oma uh, Kate O'Mara. Uh, Madeline Smith and the beautiful Ingrid Pitt. Uh, this was the first in the uh, Karstein trilogy. Uh, it was followed up by Lust for a Vampire and Twins of Evil. Uh, this was a uh, daring film for the time as it uh, explicitly uh, displayed lesbian vampire themes. Uh, uh, Hammer did these type of films to be competitive with the uh, kind of films the uh, U.S. market was putting out. Uh, in this film, uh, Ingrid Pitt plays uh, Marcilla. She is the um, uh, reborn Carmela, uh, and she stalks her female victims uh, one by one, starting with uh, Pippa Still. Uh, uh, she attacks and eventually dies. Um, this has a nice performance from uh, Peter Cushing as the general who at the end of the film uh, de uh, de decapitates Carmela uh, to prevent her from ever uh, rising again. Uh, the film also stars Madeline Smith uh, who you may who went on to star in other um, uh, another Hammer horror film, Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. She also um, had a cameo appearance in the Bond film, Live and Let Die. And she appears as the uh, 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 
romantic uh, uh, rendezvous for Bond at the beginning of the film in his apartment. Um, it, another thing about this film that's interesting, even though um, a uh, Ingrid Pitt was to play a, uh, a uh, uh, was playing Marcella, who was supposed to be in her late teens, early twenties. Ingrid Pitt actually uh, was in her thirties uh, at the time, uh, and Ingrid Pitt had no problem whatsoever with the nudity that was required for this film. Uh, this film is available on uh, uh, Blu-ray, and uh, it has a nice uh, little documentary in, uh, on the Blu-ray. Uh, and nevertheless, this is probably the better of the three uh, Karstein uh, films in the trilogy. And uh, Ingrid Pitt would go on uh, to, uh, to do another Hammer Horror film, Count uh, Countress uh, Dracula. So, but anyway, this is uh, number five on my list. Check it out. Number four, Frankenstein Created Woman. Frankenstein Created Woman was Peter Cushing's fourth album as Baron Victor Frankenstein. Film was once again directed by Terence Fisher. Uh, a, um, he was famous for uh, directing uh, many Hammer horror films. It also stars uh, Playboy Playmate Susan Denberg as the tragic uh, Christina. Uh, the film uh, it's, it's a, uh, sh uh, shows very uh, Frankenstein with his assistant uh, Hans and Dr. Uh, Hertz uh, who help him discover a way to trap the soul of the recently deceased by using a uh, device that creates a force field that would hold the soul as it is released by the body and to be able to restore it to life. Um, during the film, Hans, who is in love with uh, Christina, uh, the daughter of an innkeeper whose left side of her face is disfigured and partly paralyzed, is tormented by local dandies uh, who wind up killing Christina's father, and Hans is uh, blamed for the death and sentenced to the guillotines. Christina witnesses Hans' uh, execution and throws herself to her death off of a bridge into the river. During this, Frankenstein and Hertz is able to capture the soul of Hans and they restore his soul into Christina's body who is now and who they repair her face and body and it is a beautiful. However, Hans's soul takes over and goes on a mass murder spree. The film ends with Christina once again committing suicide and this shows a little soft side of Frankenstein as he tries to reason with her but is unsuccessful and silently walks away in guilt and disappointment. Um, great performance by Peter Cushion. This is one of the few films uh, that uh, Susan Dimberg uh, did. Uh, you may also remember Susan Dimberg as she played one of Mudd's women in the uh, uh, in the first season of Star Trek, the original series, and quickly the uh, uh, ironically the episode titled "Mutt's Women." Um, good film uh, it is available on Blu-ray. Uh, if you're wanting it to have, you should go ahead and get it because the film is starting to be out of print, and soon will be hard to find this film. Number three, the Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb is the second of four uh, mummy films that was done by Hammer. This film is, uh, has none of its normal uh, Hammer stars that they usually use for Hammer films. Uh, the film stars Terrence Morgan, uh, Fred Clark, and uh, in a role that uh, was her first role, uh, Janine uh, Rowland. Anyway, uh, the film starts out in uh, 1900, where uh, three uh, uh, archaeologists discovers the tomb of Ray, uh, and uh, his body is uh, brought back to London, England, by American showman Alexander Keane, played by Fred Clark, 
who plans to recoup his investment by uh, taking it on sensational public displays of the mummy and all the treasures. However, the mummy is revived and starts killing the members of the expedition. Uh, the uniqueness of this film is the character Al uh, Adam Beachman, played by Terrence Morgan, uh, a wealthy arts patriot, uh, turns out to uh, actually be an immortal Egyptian who is the brother of uh, Bay, uh, uh, Ray, who um, uh, wants to, uh, uh, who cannot die uh, unless his brother kills him, which he had already killed his brother. Uh, wonderful film, it is uh, got wonderful at, uh, atmosphere to this film. Uh, it's probably, in my mind, it is, uh, this is the best of the three follow-ups um, uh, in the uh, Mummy uh, 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 films that Hammer did. Uh, as each uh, Mummy film that Hammer did was a total separate plot and none of them intertwined together. This film is really, really good. You can find this film on a on a double Blu-ray disc, um, and it's also along with the Revenge of Frankenstein. So uh, check this film out. Uh, in my mind, it's a really great film. Number two, The Curse of Frankenstein. The Curse of Frankenstein is Hammer's first uh, film that really started the genre for Hammer horror. Uh, it stars Peter Cushing as Baron Victor Frankenstein and stars also stars Christopher Lee as the monster. Hazel Court also stars in the film as Elizabeth who is uh, uh, Frankenstein's young cousin who he eventually marries in the film. Uh, the film tells of uh, uh, Frankenstein's obsession with life and death and his eventual want to create new life. Uh, he has no problem in uh, instilling the parts that he needs for his work, including uh, killing uh, the mind of a uh, of an old distinguished professor, so that he can have his mind of uh, knowledge. Uh, the film is um, spectacularly done. The makeup for uh, Christopher Lee in no way resembles Boris Karloff's makeup as um, they could not uh, fringe on uh, Universal's copyright of the makeup. But the makeup is wonderfully done and uh, this also lends its hands as this film was in complete color which helped with the blood and gore. Um, Frankenstein also uh, is shown to be um, uh, obsessed with this creature and is oblivious to the consequences of his creature's actions, including killing a blind old man, and has no problem using the uh, creature uh, to uh, murder his maid, Justine, who uh, claims she is pregnant uh, with his child as he carries on an affair with her uh, and refuses to marry her. Uh, the film ends with the monster escaping and uh, trying to kill Elizabeth. Frankenstein sets the creature on fire and it falls into a bath of acid which completely destroys the monster leaving no proof that it even existed. And the film ends with uh, Frankenstein who has told the story in a flashback to a priest that uh, shows that um, the priest doesn't believe his story and Frankenstein is condemned to death for the murder of Justine and is led away to the gallows. Um, excellently well done film. Um, this film uh, set the careers of Cushing and Lee and they, this was their first collaboration together and they would do many more films, Hammer films together. Um, great film and um, I, I just I think it's a well, well done film and you can, uh, you should be able to find this film on uh, DVD here in the US. 
before we get to the number one, here are some honorable mentions. Number one, The Mummy. The Mummy once again reunites the team of Peter Cushion and Christopher Lee, who plays The Mummy. This makes uh, Christopher Lee's third out in playing a classic uh, monster. Uh, this film is unique as it doesn't borrow from the story plot of the Boris Karloff mummy film however it does from it uh, the follow-up films that universal did cushy plays john bannon uh, who along with his father and uncle are searching for the tomb of princess An uh, Anxanama, high priestess of the god karnak um of course uh lee the bam uh, the mummy Kadis is brought back to life and seeks vengeance on those who have uh, desecrated the tomb of his beloved uh, princess. Uh, it's spectacularly done. Uh, the, uh, there's the scene where uh, uh, Cushing, uh, John Bannon, shoots the mummy but has no effect and even spears him with a uh, stove poker but still does not slow uh, Cadiz down. Uh, the film also uh, stars uh, Yuvanda uh, Fersica, I hope I pronounced her name uh, correct, as Isabella Bannon, who resembles a uh, striking uh, Dan uh, uh, likeness of Kairis' uh, uh, Princess Anskanama, which comes in handy at the end of the film when she forces Kairis to put her down and Cadiz is destroyed at the end, uh, sinking in the mire, taking the scroll of life with him. This was a well done film. Atmosphere was uh, phenomenal. Uh, Lee is striking in his appearance due to his height. Uh, the makeup was uh, fantastic. And um, uh, both the performances from uh, Cushion and Lee were uh, fantastic. Uh, this film is uh, available on DVD and was recently released on Blu-ray uh, last year and uh, uh, it's a wonderful um, uh, film. Uh, there was one scene that was shot um, that uh, was considered uh, graphic and was uh, taken uh, was trimmed out of the film and that's the scene of the flashback where Cadiz was shown to have his tongue cut out so that he could not alter um, uh, words that would uh, offend the ears of the gods. Um, well done film uh, from top to bottom. This is my favorite Hammer Horror film of all time, without a doubt. That is my top 10 Hammer Horror films. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will be trying to do a Pensacon preview. I'm really looking forward to Pensacon 2017. And I'm going to talk about the guests that I'm really looking forward to uh, meeting at Pensacon. There's a lot of new guests coming. Um, you can also check all of uh, my panels that I attended uh, from last year's Pensacon and also this year's uh, Fanboy Expo where um, uh, I have a, a special great panels uh, with uh, John Schneider, Tom Walpat, The Outsiders, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, and much more. So please check those out. And thank you for watching. This has been Geeks This Week special presentation, my top 10 Hammer Horror Films. Thank you for watching.